Hey everybody, welcome to Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. And on this quick shot of romance, I am joined by podcast contributor Lindsay, and we are reviewing Damaged by Riley Edwards. Welcome to the podcast, Lindsay. Thanks, Leah. So excited to chat about this book with you. Okay, so if you um, want the synopsis from Goodreads, it will be on our on-the-shelf show notes, um, and it tells you all about Damaged. Um, this book was released released August 25th, 2020. So it is a couple years old. The tropes are age gap, damaged hero. It is romantic suspense. It's a spinoff series. And there's probably a couple other things in there, but honestly, like it's not a super tropey book. So that isn't something you need to worry about. It is from Triple Canopy. This is book one of the series. And it is a series of interconnected standalones in the sense where there are things that happen in the series that sometimes later in the series they come up but if you start in the middle of the series you're not going to be lost it is told in dual first person point of view and the put out percentage is 14 percent and then i did i read this book when it (coughs) excuse me when it first came out because i'm a riley edwards like aficionado she's an automatic one click author um but i did i have reread it a couple times and i did listen to the audiobook and it's connor crace and mackenzie cartwright you listened to the audiobook too, didn't you? I did. I read it and I listened to the audiobook. And I can't I I I can't tell you which one I'd recommend more because they're both really good. Mm-hmm. I I feel like Riley's writing style, I enjoyed reading it more. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah. there's so many details to pick up. And sometimes like in the audio, I noticed like after listening to the audio, there were like things that I kind of like, I'll zone out during the audio at some points, whereas like when I'm mm-hmm. reading, I'll pick up, you know, I'll just pick up all the details. Um, well, and I think, I think part of that is like, she has a tendency to monologue, like her characters have a tendency to monologue. And so when you're listening to this impassioned speech from the narrator, sometimes you do get a little, you don't you don't get bored, you don't get bored with the speech because there's a lot of feeling behind it, but they're sometimes they're pretty long because like she'll have characters monologue for like two or three pages sometimes, like when they get real, like in the feels. And so I think I can see where you would, that would happen. Yeah. But I think, (laughs) excuse me, I think for me, like I've read the book so many times that like, I, I, I'm only like, half in half out like when I'm listening to an audiobook anyway and so I don't even notice because like I'm so immersed in I could I could probably verbatim and tell you what happens in this book <laughs> it's pretty memorable it really is but so let's let's talk about Hadley Walker so Hadley Walker is one of the twin daughters of Jasper Walker who is one of my all-time favorite heroes in the romance book world. She's a force to be reckoned with. She is. I love her. I love this story because she has been in love with Brady for years. She's been waiting mm-hmm. for him, slowly like pushing him to his limits. And like on top of it, she just, she knows what she wants and she stands her ground. Like, mm-hmm. like, when they when she finally pushes him over the edge one of my favorite speeches is when she goes after him like he's trying to like extract himself from the situation that he's created and she does not give him an inch she calls him out oh my gosh right after like right Mm -hmm. after they do the dirty the first time actually that's what here i'm gonna I'm going to make, give you a quote, which I don't always often. <laughs> um, so this is at 16%. If you need to know, so this is not a spoiler because it happens pretty early in the book. She says, I know what I want. I know to never settle for anything, but most especially not when it comes to the man in my life. And I want a man who's all in, who's not afraid to fight by my side to make something beautiful. Luckily I was raised by men who showed me the way taught me what a real man looks like. So I know, but I was also raised by strong women who taught me to take care of myself. And like Brady starts like fighting back a little bit. And she basically like sits back and is like, you're a coward. Like you are a coward 
I know what I want. I'm going into this like open eyed, like you have damage, but I am there to help you carry it. And like, she, she lays into him. And I love that. Yeah. She does not give him an easy out. Like she, she calls him on it before he can even take the easy out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause honestly, like in that scene, like as soon as like they're done, like she sees him shut down and she doesn't even wait. Like she takes charge and she's like, if you're going to leave, like get out, like I'm, I'm done in this moment. Like, you know, that she's not done with him. Like she needs him to recognize the fact that like, she's there to carry his burdens. And that is one of the biggest things I really enjoy about a Riley Edwards heroine is sometimes they like, they have damage. Sometimes they have faults, but they are inherently strong and carry so much on their shoulders for their hero. Yeah, they're like the way the characters are written, the heroes and the heroines are written so they complement each other. Mm -hmm. So well, like there are things about Hadley where she's blind, she's blinded by her own ambition a little bit, like her own passions, because with her job, um, she's completely clueless about like, even though the prologue tells you a little bit about like what her family has been through, it sets up like the history Mm -hmm. between her and Brady. But then when you actually get into it, like she's so blinded to her, like the fact that she's not necessarily in a situation where she's safe that it's a dangerous situation because um basically there's a group um their library carries banned books and there's a group Mm -hmm. like aggressively trying to remove them like writing nasty stuff in these books leaving them like messing with her vehicle and like brady realizes the severity of the situation and he like he he kind of opens her eyes up to like hey like you're being blind to this this is very serious like you can't take your safety for granted like Mm -hmm. um and it's just like like the the and she pushes him as well like like her family history having all of her uncles who are special forces and then like her father and the things that her family has been through um it's just like it gave her the toolkit to be able to grapple with all of brady's demons and he's a little Mm. bit blind to that too at first he is and there's actually some really poignant moments because like i said jasper walker is a force like he is a force to be reckoned with in this entire series and it's one of those things where like you he's so protective of his girls so it he is a boy that like the oldest is a boy and then he has four girls who like he talks about how beautiful they are like they look just like their mom like he knew he was screwed like as soon as he had them because they are like all of them are a force and like he's so proud of like who they've become but it's one of there's a couple of moments with Jasper and Brady because Brady is he's so stuck in him in his head about the past because there's some big things that happened in his past and I don't want to spoil it yes this book is a couple years old but this is a book if you haven't read it yet you need to be in the moment like when you find out like what happened in his past because there's some really intense like scenes that like go around it but there's like moments because Brady he he wants to he's let them in but he still holds them like at arm's length in some ways and Jasper is like I'm done letting him do it like he pulls him in is like you're mine like, you're ours like and it's really it's I just really love like that mentality and you find out like in in the end of the book I'm spoiling this so Brady ends up taking Hadley's name like he becomes Brady Walker like when they get married and like they're like that whole conversation is it's a little gut wrenching, to be honest. It really is. I mean, God, this lady, she just destroys you. Mm-hmm. Like, with her writing, like, it's so, it's not like, I wouldn't classify it as like overly angsty, but the emotion in the story, mm-hmm. the backstory for these characters, and then like when everything comes to light and the way that it's dealt with, it is really just heart wrenching. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the thing, like, there's not, 
she doesn't add angst for angst's sake. Like all of their angst is inner turmoil and there's always an outside force. And it's never both, both characters aren't like severely damaged. Like both characters have some hangups, but like there's one character out of the couple that has hang up from their past or something happened like in the recent like past like so it's not that old that they're they're learning to to reestablish themselves and you see it a lot in like the next generation like series which is the one that comes right before this that like Brady is introduced in and it's just the way that she treats these characters backstories is so like she treats them so I don't even I don't even know how to explain it like it's just they're really exceptionally like detailed and you get really lost in those moments but it also really connects you to the characters they're incredibly memorable Mm mm-hmm and it also create like th- having those details like her books every single book that i've read of hers it feels like the characters are inevitable mm-hmm. like even if they're fighting against it it's like they f- it feels inevitable from very early on in the story um that's the thing like not every um, single one does that like not every romance you read feels that way no and it's one of those things where one of the characters if not both of the characters are in and they are all in from the get-go like once that switch has flipped like there's no turning back now it might take a while for that switch to flip but generally like one of them is all in even if they're pretending they're not and then the other one is sometimes is like slow to judge but there's always there's always an outside force in these stories too like there's not there's never the third act breakup or well no I take that back she doesn't rely on the third act breakup in most of her stories they do happen every once in a while but it it isn't a forced thing that doesn't make sense and this one does not have it it has a third act moment but I don't really think it's in the third act when Brady's past like comes to light and it's really like that in itself, like that scene is pretty intense the way it plays out and the guilt that Brady feels after that scene like plays out is it's rough. Yeah, that is a really rough scene. Mm-hmm. There's a few rough scenes though. <laughs> yeah, it, they're not easy romances like they they're they're not like perfect characters Mm -hmm. but i feel like all of the all of the factors in her books like they just create such strong heas because they work through the circumstances together then there's some kind of external circumstance that's you know bringing them together usually putting one or one or both of them in peril Mm -hmm. um i love it because it's i also love it because it's not always apparent like what that like the suspense element to it it's not always clear like sometimes it can be really predictable what is going on but like Mm -hmm. with a lot of her books I'm always like oh that's a plot twist like I didn't quite expect that some of them um like you can hit the nail on the head but like with this one it was definitely a plot twist and it kind of had like a little bit of a true detective type element to it Mm -hmm. um which I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, and then I also really liked that it tied into like a lot of the current events with the book world, like with the banned books and like a lot of readers really feel very strongly about that and are very passionate about it. So it was really easy to connect with Hadley as a character. Mm-hmm. And then. Well, one just... thing I like too is the banned books that she chose were not the banned books that you hear about all the time like they're not they're popular books they were extremely popular like when they like I mean they were very controversial when they came out but they are not the banned books that like you like when you think banned books they're not the instant thought banned books and I really enjoyed that as she went to like she she thought about it like she she was like I'm gonna go a little bit 
deeper into this band book world. And I'm going to pick ones that are not your typical, like go-to books. But one thing I love is like Hadley's so passionate about books in the library and she gets so upset like when she so she is paying to replace these books because they need to be on the shelf and she is passionate about it and then she gets really mad because they don't let her buy the books for the library she's pissed I, that was so funny <laughs> she gets so mad she does she but gets really I mean, mad so relatable because like I can't say that I wouldn't feel the same way oh I 100% would feel the same way like I think ban <laughs> like I personally think banning a book is ridiculous like you have the choice to not read something you but that's a that's a whole other conversation yeah. <laughs> okay but I will so I'll pivot the one of the things I love about the library scenes is she hates the knit night when the old ladies come to knit and I just love <laughs> that, like like she was talking like she has like this um d- total disdain for like the knit and pearl discussion and I'm like you know it's so funny because like I go to knit group all the time <laughs> and, like we don't actually talk very much about that but um it's really funny that like they feature that in books I always love that <laughs> it's really funny but you have to question though like if you went to like a, a knit night with a bunch of like older ladies what would the conversation be like I'm curious I'm curious to know if that is a, an actually like overheard knit pearl conversation or if it's just speculation. I I don't know. I don't know. Well, Riley, if you're listening, you need to tell us. <laughs> but this these stories too <laughs> is so the original, like the 707, where we first meet Jasper Walker and Le- Levi and Lennox and all of them, like they are the original OGs. And so that core foursome of men and core foursome of women are really prevalent in these stories as well. And they, like, they're a force to be reckoned with themselves. Like they're strong. They are open. They're loving. Like they are intense but they they allow Jasper and Emily allow Hadley to make her mistakes which i think is really important i think that like they but they also see and they like they've watched this relationship from the get go like they knew like when Hadley met Brady like she was done like she was in and but but they didn't interfere, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, and I like the scene where Jasper actually thanks Brady for like holding out to make mm-hmm. a move to give her like a chance to get her education and to figure out her career and to pursue some of the things that she wants in life. Um, so that he didn't like overshadow her kind of figuring out who she was. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the thing, because like in the prologue, it kind of it's like Hadley and Brady's like perspective of like the events that have occurred in things that happened in the next generation series. So it's always it's like big moments that happen in those series where Brady is there to help save like one of her family members or like the love of, of like the love um, per character of one of their family members. And so it's about it's four years give or take like from the moment like when they first meet to like this when this story plays out it probably is more than four years because she was either like I think she might have still been in high school so it's a little over yeah about so so it's like four or five years like in the grand scheme of things but it and that's the thing like Jasper even says he's like she was too young I appreciate that and Brady even like recognized like he recognized who she was like from the get-go but he won like he did not want to sully her life with his backstory but also like he recognized like she was too young at the time and she needed to live her life yeah such a good book though it is such a good book I really love the next book as well like which is her twins book yeah I I really just love Riley Edwards. 
I had her on my TBR forever. And then like you um said something about this book earlier this year and I was in a slump and I was like, oh, I'll read this. And then I was like, oh, I love it. I'm going to read like three more. <laughs> and then you just read all seven. I actually, well, actually there's eight read, now. I think, yeah, I've got two more left. So I think the new one and book seven. Well, seven and eight, because um, Echo Kent, who just came out, is the final book in the Triple Canopy series, and he was book eight. It was, it was, it's a good read. And that's the thing, like these books, like you, you can't, it's a really hard book to put down because the Riley Edwards writing style, like she writes, it's a fast read, like it could be a big book, but it's a fast read. She doesn't waste words. She doesn't waste descriptions. Like it is story, story, story. And it is like cogs are moving the entire time. Like there's really no downtime in the story itself. Cause every conversation that has had every action that occurs, like there's always something bigger in it. Yeah. And she doesn't tie up loose ends. Like there's so many conversations and she doesn't tie, she doesn't leave any loose end untied at the end of the story. Everything mm-hmm. feels very resolved and satisfied yeah. and very secure HEA, which I love. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of like how connected these characters are, it is very much like a village in these books, a village mm-hmm. of people. So like, if you love characters from previous stories, you're going to see them again. Like you're going to get like little easter eggs throughout of like their like the the books don't just solidify like really strong HEAs for their characters like it shows you other characters from her series Mm -hmm. where they're like reinforcing the HEA and it's just like so well that's the thing like a big thing for me (laughs) yeah because as the stories progress like you see babies being born you see people getting married you see like people getting engaged and those relationships are continuing to grow and continuing to 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 develop like in the background and that in like and I think part of it is this is such a tight-knit family that each new person they just pull into that fold because this this the four originals like this found family that they created like they hold that tight and close and like, and they, it's odd because they are kind of selective in how they bring people in. But once you're in, like you were in, you were all in and you were never getting let go. It's kind of like Becky and I, like when you, we pull you into our fold and we claim you as a friend, like you are, you're stuck with us for life. <laughs> That's a bad thing. It's actually quite wonderful. <laughs> I mean, it is. But yeah, so that's my little little pull there. But oh, yeah, this is one, what? Oh no, go ahead. Say, you like, have, one, like, one more thing. Like we were talking about how like there's monologues and things like that. I just want to say, like, if you haven't read Riley Edwards, don't let like the dialogue driven plot mm-hmm. yeah. put you off because you know what's going on. Like for as much dialogue as there is, I don't know many other authors that have like balanced it as well as she does with the imagery in the book because you know where you are you have like a very deep sense of what's going on it's like like you can imagine the full picture of what's happening not just Mm -hmm. the dialogue and it's really really well balanced yeah it really is and she like she does write a dialogue heavy book but she has even told me before she loves the dialogue she loves that interaction and she and brace people because just watch out that's all I have to say yeah it's such a good story such a good series like you can start with triple canopy you don't have to start with the next generation you don't have to start with the 707 like honestly if you read the 707 first you will hate Carter Lennox hate him I say it all the time so sometimes I just recommend you starting in this like one of these two series and you can go back to the OGs because then you have a new appreciation for how good they actually ended up because Carter Lennox, you want to dick punch hard. Hard. (laughs) I haven't read his book yet. So I'm in that category. I started with Triple Canopy and then I'm working working. all out of order. Well, out (laughs) of order, but not out of order at the same time. Because you're sticking in order for Triple Canopy and then you're going to go like, and then you're going to go like back a series and then back a series. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just forewarning you. You're going to want to dick punch Carter Lennox, but it's okay. Because he 
he is delightful in these subsequent series. But um, do you have a book you think we should <laughs> review for a quick shot of romance? If you do, send us an email at the bees at bookcaseandcoffee.com. But I do want to do a little tidbit. Lindsay and I are going to be starting doing some um, Patreon exclusive um quick shots of romance we haven't we have we're working some details out and we're getting but once we start doing that you can find all the suspense and paranormal like pnr sci-fi stuff over there so i just want to put that out there but thank you Lindsay, so much for joining me on this quick shot of romance and until next time happy reading everybody find us on instagram at buzzing about romance or on twitter at buzzing romance if you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 